tonight on Cougar News, a gunman scare has many questioning the safety measures here on campus. Plus, we take a look at the latest in summer fashion. Also, we take a look at the results of the Foothill League swim finals. Cougar News starts now. This is Cougar News. Hello and welcome to Cougar News. I'm Richard Gutierrez. And I'm Lindsay Maxitopoulos. Let's see what's going on in the Cougar Newsroom. After months of simulated crisis situation training, COC staff had to face a real-life crisis when an alleged gunman was reported in the campus parking lot. Jesse Canales tells us what the college has learned to better prepare itself for an emergency. What began as a heated dispute last Tuesday, April 5th, between a couple quickly escalated into a campus-wide alert. An alleged gunman was arrested when he threatened a female student on parking lot 15 and drove off in his car. The female and other students alerted the police, believing the suspect was armed with a gun. The police detained the suspect on Rockwell Canyon, finding two airsoft guns in his vehicle. COC students and staff received messages, both email and text, urging them to shelter in because of the alleged gunman. The issue regarding the shelter-in-place messages were that the notifications were delivered three minutes after the suspect was detained. The first messages went out before he was detained. Um, once we hit the send button, then it's up to the individual carriers as to how it's delivered. So it depends on, on who your cell carrier is. And so, um, you know, we have no way of controlling how quickly the messages are, are delivered. So, um, and, and in this case, the event was over so quickly that, um, you know, one message, the all clear message in some cases may have gotten ahead of, been delivered before um, the shelter in place message. Safely. COC staff has been preparing for a situation like this for the past 18 months using the emergency notification system program. And, uh, and we look forward to going back and reviewing what we learned and, and uh, making changes to improve it and, and make it more effective. One of the main concerns for staff and students is that the doors can only be locked from the outside. Um, having inside locks would make people feel more secure, I think. But COC says the technology of locking electronic doors from the inside has not been available until recent months. New plans from the district have been revised so that the new technology will be used in new construction. Another possible solution that has been discussed by COC staff is arming campus safety with firearms. A few years ago, I would have said, I do not want that. But in a world where you got some, a, a real possible threat of, of a, an armed person showing up trying to do damage, it seems like having um, armed security probably makes sense. COC also continues to evaluate arming campus safety and has provided three possible options, including contracting the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department to protect the campus. Another option is to develop a police department and manage the program in-house. And the third option is to continue to keep the status quo. This is Jesse Canales reporting for Cougar News. With summer right around the corner and Santa Ana winds picking up, the Los Angeles Fire Department has a few tips to help prevent and be ready for a fire. Santa Clarita is considered a high-risk area for brush fires. High winds, rising temperatures, and dry brush are all factors that can play a role in igniting these dangerous brush fires. But what can you do to be prepared? With this type of weather, uh, it's extremely dry. We have a very volatile fuel bed. It hasn't uh, burned in quite a long time. Uh, we're in a drought-like condition. So one of the things that we're uh, getting ready for is just to be prepared at a moment's notice. And what we're doing today is we're increasing our staffing throughout the county. We're pre-deploying strike teams to areas that are considered critical uh, brush areas. Brush fires are a natural occurrence. However, some of them are man-made, and the reason why they are caused by people is, uh, for one, uh, people use um, outdoor um, you know, lawnmowers or other devices, and when they hit a rock or something, it can create a spark. 
and also people that are acting recklessly out in brush areas uh, that have open fires in areas where they're not supposed to have fires. Some of them are naturally occurring. Some uh, occur through lightning strikes. Others just through radiant uh, heat. That's um, like what we're seeing today. The, the brush is extremely dry and you have increased temperatures. A local residents should be prepared by being proactive in their communities and especially in their own uh, residences. They need to make sure that the brush is cut back from their homes, that they have the proper clearance, um, and that they have taken pride in talking as a family about how uh, when a brush fire or any kind of disaster comes their way, what they're going to do, how they're going to get out, of, get, a, get out of their house or get their supplies ready. Three things you can do to stay prepared for brush fires are stay tuned to the media, be proactive in your community, and follow the Ready, Set, Go program. For more information, you can log on to fire.lacounty.gov. For Cougar News, I'm Richard Gutierrez. Attention all you outdoor enthusiasts. If you are one of the 70 million Americans who purchase Vibram's Five Finger Shoes, you are eligible for a refund. The company who claimed their minimalist shoes strengthen muscle and prevent injury has now never been proven to be completely true. Cougar News reporter Alyssa Dickert has more. Running is an excellent cardio workout, but the impact it has on your joints makes it important to have the proper shoes. The company Vibram, who manufactures the Five Finger Shoes, has been promoting their product to improve health because it mimics barefoot running. Unfortunately, it turns out these health benefits are not entirely accurate, and the company has just settled a multi-year class action lawsuit brought by customers. The shoe manufacturer will pay out a partial refund to anyone who has purchased a pair since March 2009. Many retail stores carry the shoe, but Runner's Lane in Valencia is a store that specializes in running shoes and explains why they never carried Vibrams. The science behind them, there wasn't enough for us to really carry them. We knew that, um, yes, it probably worked for people thousands of years ago, but unfortunately thousands of years ago, there was no concrete or asphalt now you know, like there is today. So that's why we weren't surprised that people are starting getting stress fractures and things like that. The science Jew is referring to is how when one wears Vibrams, the runner is more likely to strike the ground with their forefront, landing on the ball of their foot with the rest of their foot following, which can lead to those stress fractures he was referring to. Most runners are heel strikers, which means they hit the ground with the heel first and the rest of their foot follows. There have been studies, but not enough research to prove injury rates of traditional versus barefoot running shoes, which is why Vibram is having to take back its advertising claims and refund the millions of runners that they promised healthier feet. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Melissa Dickert. In 2013, an average of 28 people died per day as a result of drunk driving. College of the Canyons held an event to bring awareness to the dangers of driving intoxicated. Our own Heather Harbin brought us in for a closer look. Being in a car is the leading cause of death for people aged 13 to 20, and drinking and driving plays a huge role in that. College of the Canyons held its annual No Drinking and Driving event to inform students about the dangers of intoxicated driving. It's an interactive event. We have bowling, beer pins, we have beanbag toss with alcohol goggles and without. We have a simulated driving game and then there's loads of information. Drinking and driving is preventable. Reckless driving is preventable. So all the deaths that you have out here, regardless of the numbers, should be at zero. We'll never get that because we know that people make bad choices. We're trying to get the point across that a simple choice sometimes has tragic consequences and it's really easy to plan ahead. No one's here trying to tell you, you know, not to go out and have fun and no one's certainly here trying to tell you not to drive. So the bottom line is making a good choice in both. If you are not in a condition to drive or don't want to ride with an unsafe driver, you can call Safe Rides for a free confidential ride home at 661-259 6330. For Cougar News, I'm Heather Harbin. And now we go to Alyssa Dickert for the Cougar update. So it was pretty hot today. It was about 90 degrees. Yes, it was another hot and windy day here in Southern California. This afternoon, a fire broke out off the 405 and 118 in Granada Hills. Down south in Orange County, firefighters were having to battle brush fires in the Anaheim and Long Beach areas. And it's not looking any better in San Diego. More than 11,000 homes and businesses were evacuated because of a blaze that tore through Carlsbad. Another fire at Camp Pendleton also prompted evacuations. Red flag warnings are in effect through Thursday in those areas. 
Here in Santa Clarita, we will still feel that heat wave, but the wind should die down by tomorrow. Still be cautious and don't leave kids or pets unattended in a locked car. On to other news, Donald Sterling keeps digging himself into a deeper hole. In an effort to make up for his initial remarks about Magic Johnson, Sterling did, an, did the opposite in an interview with CNN's Anderson Cooper. Sterling again made racist comments about Johnson and said he is not a fit role model for children. Yesterday, in a separate interview, Johnson responded saying, Sterling is from the Stone Ages and that he will pray for him. Now, an amazing video from Bakersfield where a cat saves the day for a young boy. Check this out. Surveillance video shows the boy innocently playing in the driveway when a dog suddenly attacks him. With no hesitation, the family's cat jumps to ward off the dog. The mom came in right after. Luckily, the boy only suffered minor cuts that required stitches. According to TMZ, the decision has been made that the dog will be put down. But as for the cat, however, he still has all nine lives. Well, that's the latest from the Update Desk. For more stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you can check us out at cougarnews.com. Back to you guys. Thanks, Alyssa. Most students don't know what to expect when they think of a speech team, but there's a lot more involved than just a typical informative presentation. COC Speech Team Champion Showcase shows us what competitors do before and during competitions. Taylor Villanueva tells us more. Tuesday night, COC Speech Team hosted a showcase in the Hasley Theater to educate students on what exactly the speech team does during competitions. The night consisted of several performances premiering the different styles typically done during speech events, such as prose, poetry, and traditional informative speeches. Chancellor Diane Van Hook attended the event to cheer on the team's champion members during their performances. Team member Hillary Phillips, who is the only student in COC history to earn 21 awards in two years, was one of the presenters. The Speech Team Champion Showcase will continue performances next Tuesday, May 27th at 6.15 p.m. and at 8.15 p.m. For Cougar News, I'm Taylor Villanueva. You don't have to leave Santa Clarita to find good food and live music entertainment. For those of you who have missed out on the 2014 Santa Clarita Taste of the Town, Jason Martin gives us a look back. The 2014 Santa Clarita Taste of the Town well underway when we showed up. We took time to sample some food, some tasty drinks, as well as some great music. <laughs> Vendors on hand, such as Anheuser-Busch, New Hall Refinery, Wolf Creek, Cocolita Cakes, and Fireman's Brew, it was sure to be a good time. day to speak with some of the vendors to see what they brought to share with the crowd. In terms of participation, we have a uh, about a 10% increase in our vendors, but a huge increase in our participation from people purchasing. We had a uh, hundred tables in our reserve seating this year. We 1,000 reserve seats. The founder of the company is a real fireman. He's still a fireman for LAFD. He should have been here today, but as we all know in California, there's a lot of brush fires going on, so he's out doing his thing as a fireman. Uh, we offer three kinds of beer. We have a blonde, uh, which is a Pilsner-style beer. We have a brunette, which is our best seller, which is an 8% double bock. And then we have our redhead, which is an amber ale we use caramelized malts in. We, uh, the reason um, Cocolita is just so different is we have about 65 flavors that rotate, and what I did over the last, like, probably 25 years is read the autobiographies of Lucille Ball who's like the all-time best and Bob Hope and Audrey Hepburn and 
you know, James Dean and just all these people, and I found out what their favorite drink was, their favorite dessert, and I made a cupcake for it. So we're unique in that way. The Taste of the Town was the place to be this Sunday with all the great food and all the great drinks. Everything was quite delicious. For Cougar News, I'm Jason Martin. Music filled the streets of downtown Newhall during its monthly event, Jam Sessions. Our own Ariel Thompson gives us a closer look behind the sounds of Santa Clarita. The sounds of the music echoed down the streets of Newhall Thursday night. Jam Sessions is an event that focuses on a group of people to make music. Families and anybody in the community can come play an instrument, learn to dance, find their own creativity. We are partnering with the city of Santa Clarita to have jam sessions here each month um, so that we can uh, create this opportunity for your community. For some, music means many things. For one heart district counselor, music means everything. I, music has been part of my life, I think, forever. I, when I was younger, I sang with bands and um, different kinds of music, rock music, pop music, and then um, country music. Music is a part of everybody's life. I mean, everybody finds different songs that, that, relate, that they relate to or, you know, different times in their life, different songs have different meanings. And, and so music is really a special part of everybody's life, and so I think that's why it's really great to be able to bring it out to the community and let people hear this stuff. Pick up an instrument that you have always looked at and thought about and 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 decide that you're just going to try it. So jam sessions are going to happen here on Main Street um, on Thursdays in Newhall uh, on the second Thursday of every month. Even you can participate in jam sessions. For more information, visit cougarnews.com. I'm Ariel Thompson. Coming up next on Cougar News, we're going to find out the latest in the entertainment world. Plus, we get a look at the local Pacifica Island Festival. Stay tuned. In the mood for endless Italian dishes, Vincenzo's Pizza is your one-stop shop. From their hand-tossed thin crust pizzas, to their meaty Chicago dogs and their toasty sandwiches, to their creamy chicken alfredo pasta. I love their chicken alfredo pasta. Vincenzo's New Hall has exactly what your appetite desires. With fresh ingredients, 12 cold beers on tap, and live entertainment on the weekend. You will not be disappointed. Vincenzo's Pizza, inch for inch, the best pizza in the Santa Clarita Valley. Habitat for Heroes. Really, it's a story about people. Letting people see that they're not alone, they're not isolated. We're here to help, and we need to work on behalf of our veterans then we can really change that veteran's ability to reintegrate into the community. Habitat for Heroes is not just rebuilding homes, but it's rebuilding lives. And that's the message we want to get across. Get involved. Visit HabitatSCV.org and find out how you can help. West Branch astronomy students are breaking ground as they're the first high school to attempt to capture cosmic dust with the launch of a high-altitude weather balloon designed by the students themselves. So this is definitely the first high school that has ever attempted a cosmic dust collection with a high-altitude balloon. Um, any attempts that have been made before, number one, weren't done by high schoolers, and number two, they didn't take the same precautions that my group did. They didn't have their sample open at altitude, close at altitude, and then reopen in a clean room. And my kids are taking all the same steps, really, that a lot of the NASA collection groups would take. Um, so we're trying to send our samples in to Johnson Space Center to have their cosmic dust collection unit um, examine it to see if it's really cosmic dust or if it's any contaminants that are up there. Um, but the steps that my kids have taken to actually collect it is, is totally unique for any sort of high school or even undergraduate. They've just totally taken this upon themselves. It's really impressive. I can't take any credit for it. They've, this is all him. Blast Off is set to take place near the high school's basketball courts at 6.30 p.m. on Friday, May 16th. Arrive early at 6 p.m. for food and games. A longtime resident of Santa Clarita won a very prestigious award this past weekend. Our very own Christiane Kimberlin was there to give us all the details. The Alex Theater on Brand Boulevard in Glendale was to host to the prestigious 5th Annual ACE Awards, Athletics with Character and Ethics. 
on Saturday evening, May 10th. Bob McKay, a longtime resident of Sandal Clarita, was selected by the Glendale News Press and the Character and Ethics Committee for this year's ACE Award recipient for the category of Coach. The event was kicked off with a reception and then followed by an introduction and recognition for the award. Mission statement, um, slightly because I think it's appropriate for this evening. Um, better lives, better families, better communities through sports. So congratulations to all the awardees. Next up was Santa Clarita's Bob McKay. The men's tennis coach at Glendale Community College. During his tenure, Bob has built a great reputation for the program throughout the state. He sets a great example for his players and has built the program and grown the group, the name of GCC nationwide. Congratulations. Following the awards was a concert performed by the Glenda Pops, sponsored by the Glendo Arts. I asked Coach McKay, how did you feel when you had found out that you had won the Character and Ethics Award for the coaches? It's great to win any award, but when you win an award under Character and Ethics, it's very, very special. This is the second time I had won this award, so it's very, very special to me to know that uh, uh, an award of this, t of this measure comes my way a second time. I asked McKay about his philosophy and how it relates to life skills. I feel what they're learning on the court, I want them to take off the court. I want them to be able to do that when they go in looking to get to the, maybe to move on to college, being able to go into interviews uh, in a position in life when they're applying for jobs. I want them to realize that they have the strength to go in and that if they don't get it, there's always next time, just like in tennis. You always have that next ball. And late yesterday, we found out that McKay was made Coach of the Year for the fifth time for the All-Western State Conference. Congratulations. And this is Christiane Kimberlin for Cougar News. All right, we have Alexa Sonner um, for the entertainment. What do you have for us? Tell me more about this Jay-Z and Solange incident. Oh, we'll get to that. But first, the Friday Night Film Series returns this Friday with three independent films starting at 4.30 p.m. in Hasley 101. The film Ain't Them Bodies Saints starts the night off. Bob Muldoon escapes from prison to search for his girlfriend and young daughter, but the reunion doesn't go as planned when he finds her with a lawman of their past. Short Term 12 follows that at 6.30 p.m. A compassionate young supervisor at a foster care facility for at-risk teens, Grace struggles with memories from her own troubled past and begins to fall apart. The final film of the night is Blue is the Warmest Color. 15-year-old Adele is focused on boys until an encounter with a blue-haired girl spikes her interest. She begins exploring her desire for girls while becoming a woman. It's not all about walking down a runway and looking pretty for the judges. It takes determination, poise, and smarts to win the title of Senorita Mexico USA. Born and raised in Santa Clarita, Satara Katavi sat down with her own Yvette Sanchez and told us about her accomplishments and how her dream role brought her back to COC. Native Setare Katibi just won the title of Senorita Mexico U.S. 2013 this past Christmas and couldn't be more thankful for the avenues it has opened up for her. More than just opening up many learning avenues to grow as an individual, um, it has opened many doors in the entertainment industry for me to audition for this pageant named Nuestra Belleza Latina on Univision. And it was a really good opportunity because it allowed me to express my talents uh, as a, com a comedic actress, writer, um, personality. And uh, from there, uh, a very renowned show called Sábado Gigante saw me and invited me to be a part of that show. And so I worked there for a year and a half in Miami as a show co-host. If you want to see a true beauty live on stage, make sure to come check out Señorita Mexico and COC's production of Rent. It's my favorite musical. 
It's got one of the roles of my dream, which I now get to create and experiment with, and, and you got to come watch it. Anyway, this Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Get your tickets, canyonpack.com. I had to come back to my roots because, first off, this is where I got my education and inspiration and where I really had teachers that were quality teachers. They inspired me and helped me believe in myself and have confidence in what I had to offer to the world. And with that little bit of faith and, and love, I was able to do everything that I've been able to do now. For Cougar News, I'm Yvette Sanchez. With summer vacation just a few weeks away, you can't be caught sporting last year's fashions. Taylor Villanueva and Monique Urquidez have a few style tips that'll have you looking hot just in time for summer. Summer is the perfect time to change up your beauty look, and one of the season's hottest trends is short hair. With celebs like Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian, and Reese Witherspoon all flaunting their new locks that are layered and shorter, there is no lack of inspiration for your cut. Aside from having healthier hair from this cut, it is also an excellent opportunity to show off trendy cutout backs and fun strappy dresses. For those of you who, like me, already have this short look or are considering chopping your hair shorter, here are some great tips for you. A chin length or shoulder length haircut is almost nearly impossible to pull back into a ponytail, so braids and bobby pins are your biggest ally in keeping hair off of your face. Number two, make sure to buy a mini curling wand. It's the perfect size for creating messy curls with super short strands. You will notice your hair starting to feel a lot greasier after you cut it short. Having a good dry shampoo on hand is super helpful. We look forward to seeing you soon with your new summer haircut. This is Taylor Villanueva. And I'm Monique Urquidez. Chances are you've been seeing a lot of pictures from Coachella all over the internet some posted by your friends, and even by celebrities. If you're looking to see what all the hype is about, your chance is coming up. Coachella pre-sale tickets for 2015 will be available this Friday at 10 a.m. Golden Voice even offers payment plans if you can't afford to dish the money out all at once. This music and arts festival has featured the likes of Chance the Rapper, Skrillex, Neutral Milk Hotel, Lana Del Rey, and Anthony Green. This is one summer festival you won't want to miss. COC will be hosting its first ever Battle of the Bands competition. Seven artists have been selected to compete in a performance on May 18th. The Canyon Country Campus will host the event from noon to 5 p.m., offering music, food, and a variety of other activities. If you're interested in music, this is definitely an event you'll want to check out. Speaking of music, it looks like famous rapper and producer Jay-Z has 99 problems, and Solange Knowles is one of them. According to a report from TMZ, Solange Knowles' sister Beyonce Knowles attacked Jay-Z in a New York City elevator. Though it is unclear what the fight was about, reports say Beyonce and Solange left the hotel together while Jay-Z left in a separate cab by himself. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Entertainment. I'm Alexis Sonner. Back to you guys. Thanks, Alexis. Student field trips are more uncommon these days with shrinking school budgets, but that's better than learning out in but what's better than learning out on the field with the trees and your surroundings? The biology students on campus got to spend a few days in the forest this past week. Over the weekend, students from the Biology and Environmental Studies Department at College of the Canyons took their annual field trip to Camp Takowitz in the San Bernardino Forest. Once a year, the Environmental Studies and Biology Department on campus come together at Camp Takowitz in the San Bernardino Forest for a hands-on field studies trip. I teach in the Biology Department and the Environmental Studies Science Department. And I like to be outside and I like to be with my students outside. So this is the field studies program and we've been doing this for about five years here at Camp Takowitz in the San Bernardino Mountains. And the goal of this is to get students to learn in nature, and to be able to study the plants, animals, geology, and the environment um, in a natural setting rather than in a room where there are four walls. I, I see this as pretty relevant to my major being psychology, just because I think that it's important information for us all to know how to like 
coexist with different organisms in our environment and more than just humans there's so many species of things in the world and not even just in the world but even in this small ecosystem here um, it's it's really awesome Pacific Islander cultures came together introducing different Islander dances, food, and even hand custom-made wear. Cougar News reporter Abigail Gutierrez has more. Many different cultures came together at the Pacific Islander Festival for a display of various cultural dances, from Hawaii, Tahiti, Samoa, and Rotongo. Families were surrounded by their loved ones, relaxing and enjoying the warm weather, accompanied by the Ukulele Club of Ventura County. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha! Guests enjoy shopping for skirts, raffle tickets, handbags and hats, and of course, food. Extravagant <laughs> floral, colorful headpieces, necklaces, bracelets, and hula skirts were being sold along with apple, grape, and orange Hawaiian sugar rock scents. A small animal outdoor zoo was open to all guests. Children were also able to feed the cows, turkeys, and pigs. If you enjoyed watching this festival and want more information about the upcoming next event, visit scvhula.com. For Cougar News, I'm Abby Gutierrez. Still to come on Cougar News, we had an up-close look at the Wings for Life run. Also, we're going to take a look at three former Cougars who made it to the NFL. Stay tuned. You are so worthless. Why don't you just go kill yourself? It's the first time I've ever seen the same letter grade across all your classes. Get out of here. Get out of here. You can't shut I'm Richard Horvitz. I'm Tara Strong. I'm Michael C. Morona. And I'm Danny Tamarelli. Hi, this is Ming Chen. This is Mike Zapsik. Hi, it's Louie Anderson. I'm Weird Al. I'm Florence Henderson. I'm the Grinch. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. You're watching. And uh, you're watching. And you lucky people are watching. Cougar News. Cougar, Cougar News. News. Cougar News. Cougar News. Cougar News. Cougar News. You're watching Cougar News. So this is for the older ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a cougar. better way to spend Mother's Day weekend than by pushing your body to the limit, all while helping out a great cause. Well, Taylor Villanueva has taken us to the Fight, Fight It 5K race, which benefited a local organization. Runners, take your mark! Yeah. More than 300 adults, children, and dogs gathered at Central Park Saturday morning to run the Fight It 5K race, with all proceeds benefiting the Brenda Malin Cancer Fund. The Brenda Malin Cancer Fund is an all-volunteer, locally-run nonprofit that was started in Santa Clarita because Brenda Mailing was someone who lived in this community. Although the Brenda Mailing Cancer Fund started here in Santa Clarita, it is positively affecting the lives of people from all over. We offer grants to young adults between the ages of 18 and 40 who are currently in cancer treatment. So we actually directly pay their bill so that um, maybe that time, which is already very stressful, is a little less stressful. Several participants have been involved with the Fight It 5K for many years now, including this year's race winner, Kyle Robinson. Oh, it's a great event. They always put it on, and they're old friends now, and we just have a great time. It's for a great cause. The, the Brenda Milling Cancer Fund is just, they do a lot to help help people. Tens of thousands of dollars every year to help families who are struggling for the noble cause. So it's always good to be out here supporting it. As for those who aren't competitive runners, the race was a great way for friends and family members to get together for a good cause. Uh, my wife talked me into it. She, she likes the, it's a good cause for cancer. It's Mother's Day weekend, so we uh, both ran the 5K and my son ran the 1K. To learn more about the Brenda Mailing Cancer Fund or to make a donation, visit www.bmcf.net. For Cougar News, I'm Taylor Villanueva. Valencia Town Center was a starting line for a worldwide race hosted by Red Bull. 
to benefit spinal cord research. Cougar News reporter Justin Molson has more. The Red Bull Wings for Life World Run kicked off here in Santa Clarita over the weekend. Runners started at 34 different locations in 32 different countries across the globe to benefit spinal cord injury research. Being, being a spinal cord injury myself, uh, it means a lot to see organizations putting things like this together. So it's something in my eyes I would never miss it for the world. Unlike normal races, there was no time limit or finish line. A catcher car started exactly 30 minutes after the start of the race at 9 miles per hour and increased every hour until it reached 21 miles per hour. Once the catcher car passed the runners, they were eliminated from the race and their scores were posted on the global leaderboard. We love to run and it's such a great cause. So I've actually had back surgery, so kind of cool to be part of this cause. Runners Caleb Neff and Janine Rutherford were the local male and female winners running distances of 34 and a half miles and 21 miles respectively. This is so important that we find a cure to get these people back out of the, the wheelchairs and, and moving again, whether they, they want to go flying again or running Wings for Life. It's just it's a perfect uh, name for the organization. We need to get these people their wings back. My goal today when I woke up this morning and gave my kids a kiss on the cheek was to go and run a half marathon at a decent pace, training. Um, got out there and it was such a nice morning and inspired by what I saw in the morning. When I pulled up here. As the male winner in the United States, Neff won the opportunity to choose any location in the world for next year's run. 100% of the registration fees were donated to spinal cord research, raising over $4 million worldwide. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Justin Molson. And now for sports, we have Yvette Sanchez. Tell us a little bit more about the exciting Cougar alumni. Well, that exciting it is. Three former Cougars will be making their way to NFL training camps this July. Tavon Rooks, Karim Barton, and Will Latu were all picked up by the NFL teams during the NFL draft this weekend. Rooks, who played for the Cougars in 2010 before moving on to Kansas State, became the 12th former Cougar to be drafted when the New Orleans Saints selected him with the 202nd pick. Barton and Latu were both signed as undrafted free agents. Barton, who spent the 2009 season at COC before leaving to Morgan State University, was signed by the Philadelphia Eagles, while Latu, who played for the Cougars in 2011, was signed by the Kansas City Chiefs. The three players now up the number of former Cougars on the NFL roster to seven. Hart, Valencia, West Ranch, and Saugus have all been battling it out for the Foothill League Championship over the course of the season. Going into Friday's game, Saugus and Hart were tied with 9-3 records at the top of the Foothill League, and the Centuriums have been hot lately, winning six of their last seven. With a 10-4 record on the road, they were visitors to the West Ranch Wildcats, who have only lost one game at home all year. Top of the fifth, it's Rudy Aguilar bringing in Brendan Griffith and Roy Vadejo. Centuriums, 3-0. Bottom of the six, it's Jake Sperlin with the solo jack to right to cut the lead to just one. Tie game in the bottom of the seventh, it's Jason Dries coming up in the clutch with the walk-off base hit as the Wildcats overcome the Centurions 4-3. to three. Right Hart won their game on Friday against Golden Valley, putting them in sole possession of first place coming into their Tuesday game against Saugus. A Hart win would lock up the Foothill League championships for the Indians, while a Centurion win would force a Friday showdown at Saugus High between the two teams for a Foothill League title. We pick up the game with no score in the top of the fourth. Saugus Rex Kempel on first being hit by a jack. Lost in pitch, Kempel swipes second base, giving the Centurions a runner on second. After a sacrifice bunt by Ty Faulkner, to move Kempel to third, the Centuriums get on the board after a sack fly by Ray Videjo. The only run Rostin would allow in the game. Rostin would eventually get his revenge in the bottom of the seventh. Bases full of Indians when the junior drives a ball through the right side of the infield, scoring two and locking up Indians' 31st league championship at the Indians win the game 2-1. With the Saugus loss, Valencia came in the game looking to take sole possession of second place. Golden Valley would pick up a run in the top half of the fifth, but it's in the bottom half and it's Feishman again, this time dunking one to shallow right to score the run, 
But Grizzly catcher Jordan Garrett slings it to second to nail Fishman to end the inning. Top of the seventh now, and with two out, Coyle Bygum laces one just under the shortstop's glove, and Cody Reitmeyer would follow with a single himself, and the Grizzlies are poised for attack. It's up to cleanup hitter John Nagel, but he pops it up to the second baseman to end the game. Valencia would take the win with the final score of 4-1. to one. The COC men's golf team took first place in the SoCal Championships and advanced to regionals where they won second place in a card off. Sydney Wolf became the second Cougar ever to win the individual medalist award in the regional tournament. Great end to the season, Cougars. Four years ago, one of the most magical streaks in sports history came to an end when the Yukon's women basketball team lost for the first time in 91 games. Back in the SCV, another historical heater ended in the pool at the Aquatic Center. The Foothill League Swim Championships usually are a coronation for the Hart boys and girls, but in the girls' 200 IM, it was clear Valencia had no use for royalty as the freshman Nicole Popoff out-touched two others for the win. And moments later, Kevin Dye swam to an impressive victory over Hart's Tanner Olsen for another set of valuable points. All was not bleak for the Indians. Look at Cole Cogswell. The Hart junior took a serious run at Anthony Irving's 15-year-old league record and touched the wall in 21.68. And the records just keep falling. Junior sensation Abby Whitesall tore up the girls' 100 free, shattering the league record record by over two seconds. But for the first time in history, the Valencia boys and girls won the league title, ending Hart's 18-year streak. Several simmer, swimmers will compete in the CIF championships tomorrow and Saturday. That was one crazy week in sports. We went from high school, junior college, to the NFL. I'm Yvette Sanchez, back to you guys. Thanks, Yvette. Did you know that building Legos involves engineering and physics? Our own, our own Aldo Canepa found, that, found groups of girls that have mastered the art of Lego competitions. Three, two, one, Lego. Lego building reminds us of our childhood, of our heated up and keep it cool robotics. It's more than that. It's a competition and a way to better their knowledge. From day one, loved the program. Uh, the program works at developing the whole student, not only in giving them experience in engineering concepts, but uh, teamwork skills, which are really important, and um, organizational skills, um, public speaking. So you're really developing the whole student, and that's what we love so much about this program. We would like to inspire them with an interest in becoming engineers, uh, scientists, uh, mathematicians, but even if they decide they don't want to do that, we want them to grow up and become better thinkers, better, better problem solvers, better members of society. But for these girls, it's more than just the competition. It's about being a family, working together, and most of all, having fun. We're really close. It depends, like, when we have to become a team and stay focused on our jobs, we will. But we, I do consider them family. A lot of kind of like, oh, we're best buddies, let's go, like, like, we're able to, like, share our personal experiences, like, <laughs> joke around, but we can still concentrate and get the task done. Well, we have sleepovers all the time, we, we eat, we go ice skating together. Very, very close. We, we don't have any secrets between each other at all. Yeah, we're very close with each other, we tend, like, Oh my gosh, this environment is so uh, welcoming and loving and just, I guess, beautiful. <laughs> Be sure to keep up with these girls at heatedupandkeepitcool.org. For Cougar News, I'm Aldo Canepa. That does it for this edition of Cougar News. I'm Richard Gutierrez. Remember, you can catch us on the web at cougarnews.com. And I'm Lindsay Maxitopoulos. Don't forget to send us your story ideas and news tips at cougarnews.com. Good night.